In this video, we're going to just quickly look over the calculations for lab 24. Now, I'm assuming at the start of this video that you've figured out how to calculate the number of moles of hydrogen. It's a pretty big F, but please look over the pre-lab materials and see if you can figure out how to use the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, solve for N, and the whole lab for the electrolysis experiment was to determine the volume of hydrogen that was in the burette, pressure of hydrogen, using the atmospheric pressure and vapor pressure, uh, of water and then temperature in the room converted to Kelvin and R. So hopefully you've gotten to that point. That's where you need to be at the beginning of this video here. Now at this point you should have the moles of hydrogen, the mass loss of your anode, the little piece of metal that was used, you should have enough data to get that experiment, uh, experimental information, and then uh, time, how long did this experiment run? We can use that information to calculate uh, a couple of things here. The amount of coulombs that were transferred in this experiment, the amperage used in the experiment, and the equivalent mass of a metal along with the charge of this metal. We're actually going to need to know the metal uh, that's involved here. All right, so first things first. Let's say you've got the, uh, the moles of hydrogen. Now in this, is exper in this experiment, two moles of hydrogen ions uh, were reduced. They gained two electrons to make one mole of hydrogen. What you calculated was the moles of hydrogen gas, H2. So using the stoichiometry of the chemical reaction, uh, we can then just use the one to two mole ratio uh, of the moles of hydrogen and multiply by this stoichiometric ratio to figure out the moles of electrons. I give an example of here of 1.19 times 10 to minus three moles, multiplying by the ratio, my moles of hydrogen can cancel out and I'll be left with 2.38 times 10 to minus three moles of electron. Now in the lab and in chemistry, this is, we can say in a couple of different ways. This is the number of moles of electrons transferred, or this is the number of Faraday's passed in the experiment. All right, once we have this information of moles of electrons, we can do a couple of things. Uh, one of them is to look at the equivalent mass of the metal that's transferred. Equivalent mass is like molar mass, it's except for it, or it's gonna be off by a ratio that's related to the charge of the element. So, we need to take then the grams uh, that were lost in this experiment. A number of grams is related to the number of moles of electrons and thus moles of the metal uh, that were transferred. So by taking the grams loss, let's say it's 0 0.0798 for this experiment. This is some experimental data from previous years. Divided by the number of moles of electrons that transferred from our last experiment uh, calculation, we can do this calculations to get a grams per mole or molar mass of the material and uh, have three significant digits here, so 33.5 grams per mole. Now you either have to be told or be able to figure out what metal uh, that was used in the experiment. And if you know it was zinc, we could take the actual molar mass of zinc divided by this new equivalent mass, and it's gonna be uh, equivalent to uh, the charge of the cation. In this experiment, I get 1.95, and uh, that rounds to two. And that's a pretty, uh, pretty good answer to get us uh, close to the known oxidation state of plus two for zinc. That's a common one. All right, so that should help you through the equivalent mass calculation. And one of the last things we need to do is calculate the amperage that was used in this experiment. Now with a bunch of students running this experiment, the amperage kind of changes. More students, less amperage, because it gets spread out among the number of students uh, that are using the same battery source. So the amperage could change for everybody. Let's say this experiment took 840 seconds. Now, uh, that gives us half of the calculation that we need for amperage. Amperage is coulombs divided by second. Coulombs is related to the number of moles of electrons that flowed. In fact, it's related by Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs. So using that relationship that one mole equals coulomb Faraday's constant, we can then actually calculate the number of coulombs passed. Where did I get the moles of electron? Uh, previous calculation. So take that number, multiply it by Faraday's constant, and end up with 229 Kelvin. Taking 200, uh, not Kelvin, Coulombs. Now taking the Coulombs, 229 Coulombs, divided by the time, 840 seconds, plug that in our calculator, and we can see how many amps, uh, often just written as the symbol A, that were passed in the experiment. Hope this helps you to uh, do the calculations for your lab worksheets and uh, that you can understand a little bit more about an electrolysis experiment. And uh, thank you for joining me.